Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to talk today a little bit about watering and irrigation and this has kind of become a little bit more of an issue lately because of the sporadic weather that we've been having lately. We seem to have been having extended periods of dry weather and that is causing a problem for plant growth and we want to kind of mitigate the effects of dry weather by providing water ourselves so that our plants can thrive and there are several schools of thought on this the most common one probably is to water deeply less often so that water is getting deep down to the roots where the plants need it and recently i was re-listening to a podcast the no-till flowers podcast with jenny and emma from earthenry farm in tasmania they were discussing pulse watering and before this podcast, I hadn't heard of pulse watering before, but as usual, the podcast was very intriguing and I wanted to know more about it. And I also like to try things out myself just to um, see how it works in this climate. As I mentioned, Emma's from Tasmania, Jenny's in the US and I'm here in the UK. So we've got to test how these things work on our own soils and in our own climates. I am here on kind of clay soil, um, which I've been doing no dig on for seven years now. And the soil is kind of getting that nice kind of loamy feel to it over the years. It's not so much of a sticky clay anymore. Um, after the years of compost and the no dig, we seem to have improved soil structure. And also with the broad forking and compost tea amendments and things like that, I think the soil has improved greatly over the years. And that also helps to improve water holding capacity and the way that water moves throughout the soil as well. And because we have been getting a little bit less rain lately, I have been turning the irrigation on a little bit more than usual. I actually started off with drip irrigation in my front flower field but I took it out after I didn't use it for a couple of years because we were getting kind of adequate rainfall or I felt like the flowers were getting enough rainfall so that I didn't have to turn that on. And then I started wondering whether drip irrigation was better or a sprinkler system and I came to the conclusion, um, right or wrongly, that I find that sprinkler irrigation is better because we are getting the whole soil um, wet rather than just the points where the irrigation is dripping down. I came to that conclusion because in my mind it's better that the soil, the whole of the soil is biologically active, not just the areas where the irrigation is dripping down into the soil. So I want the whole um, soil surface to be active not just the areas that I'm watering so I feel like a sprinkler system would be more beneficial than drip irrigation. The downside of a sprinkler system is obviously um, that the water is less targeted so you are probably going to use more water to water the whole soil surface than you would be um, with targeted uh, watering um, at the root zone of a plant. It's also more tricky to do um, overhead sprinkler watering when it's windy and during the day because obviously a lot of the water droplets are going to be landing on the leaf surface which is a downside of sprinkler water watering during the day when the sun is out and also if it's particularly windy there are areas of the field that aren't necessarily going to get enough water because the wind is blowing it away from the tag area. So when it comes to watering I don't do too much of it here on the farm because um, I want to encourage the plants to be able to look after themselves. I don't want them to be dependent on the water that I am providing them on a uh, however frequent basis. So usually I'll water them a little bit uh, once they've been planted out just to help them establish and then I will only water them if we get quite a lot of days in a row without any rain um, because I want those plants to, to develop deep roots and look after themselves. So after listening to the No-Till Flowers podcast about pulse watering, I was very intrigued. It uh, supposedly uses less water and it also encourages the lateral movement of water through the soil so that um, we are not losing too much water downwards that's going to leak out and not be useful to the plants anymore. And we also don't want nutrients to leak out downwards below the reach of the roots um, so that those aren't available to the plant anymore. We want the moisture to stay on the soil surface relatively 
um, shallowly so that the plant roots of our annual plants are able to um, access that water that is there in their root zone. And keeping that root zone moist is really important for microbial activity. So if we've got a um, very dry root zone, then the microbes aren't able to function properly. The whole symbiotic relationship between the plant and the microbes isn't going to work as effectively as it could if there was adequate moisture there. So when I'm applying things like um, compost teas, compost extracts that I want to inoculate my soil with, those are going to be um, useful straight away in the moisture of the soil. They're not going to dry up and die in the dry top layers of the soil. Those microorganisms are going to be able to move through the soil because of the moisture content and they are going to be hopefully effective within the soil. I just wanted to mention a little bit about soil health and how that relates to water retention. So if you are working on improving soil health, you are bringing in lots of uh, healthy microbes, you've got living roots in the soil and you're bringing back earthworms and things like that. That creates lots of channels within the soil that the water can move through and also you're building up organic matter and humus which can hold up to 80 to 90 percent of its own weight in water and the affinity of those substances for water means that the water holding capacity of your soil is going to be greatly improved if you are following the soil health principles which is to not disturb it too much keep living roots in the soil and those kind of things i've mentioned in my videos quite a lot then this pulse watering method is good for those of you who are just starting out on your soil health journey and you feel like you what your soil isn't getting quite enough water and the water holding capacity isn't great and also if you have got microbially active soils um, because we have been getting such dry weather at the moment it's definitely going to be giving them a boost to have a bit of extra water so hopefully eventually as soil health improves we will need to water less um, but if we still finding that we need a little bit of extra water then I think pulse watering is going to be really effective and I have just started doing this so I can't tell you the results have worked perfectly here because um, I'm at the beginning of my experiment, but I just wanted to share with you the facts. So if you wanted to start your own experiment, then you could do as well. So it works on the basis that you water uh, little and often. So at the moment, I've got my irrigation set on a timer uh, at four waterings a day for five minutes each. So that's 20 minutes of water per day. And I think I'm putting about 100 litres on it in one day. And I'm told at first you don't really notice a difference and there isn't really a lot you can see on the soil surface um, and that's especially true for drip ir irrigation but uh, after uh, one to three weeks of doing this regularly you will start to notice that all of the moist areas start to join up and you get more even distribution of moisture throughout the soil surface. So without a proper irrigation timer, it's not really possible to do this kind of pulse watering setup. Otherwise, you would be back and forth like a yo-yo out to your tap, turning it on and off at the allocated times that you need your pulse watering system to come on. And luckily enough, I was gifted this irrigation timing setup by Rainpoint and it has been really amazing. And it was just at the point where I was thinking, umming and ahhing about whether to um, invest in something like this and um, this opportunity came along and I thought this is a perfect time to try out pulse watering and and actually just having a timer um, anyway because there have been so many times in the past where I have put some irrigation on and I've thought to myself I'll set a timer on my phone I'll come back in an hour or two and I'll turn the irrigation off and when that timer goes off, I'm busy, inevitably, I'm doing something else. So I stop the alarm and then I totally forget about it. And then I settle down on an evening. I've just sat down on the sofa, I'm just running a bath. And then I remember I've left the irrigation on. So I have to go running outside onto the farm and turning that irrigation off. And it's such a pain in the backside. So it is so handy for me to be able to just get on my phone and just turn it off with one click. It's really, really convenient. And if I want to turn it on um, when I'm not here, then I can do that as well. So that is super, super convenient. So this timer um, for, this, for the 3 p.m. irrigation is on at the moment. And we've got two minutes left on the timer. There's some information here about the weather outside, um, what the forecast is, 
and how how much water I've used um, in my last usage and that was um, a little bit high just because I was doing some filming and I turned the irrigation was turning it on and off at the time um, but the setup that I have is that I'm able to water two zones at once if I want or I can set up um, two different zones to water at different times so I can click this button here to view the different zones I haven't actually got anything hooked up in zone two at the moment so there's nothing showing there um, but that is zone one where it is currently watering and the timings for the pulse watering were really easy to set up I can basically set up an unlimited amount of waterings on there for any kind of duration any time of day um, I can actually set it to how many litres of water I want to use as well so if you are limited on the amount of water that you can use you can set that up so that you're, you are not going over your allocated amount and if I want to change that because it's raining then I can do quite easily as well. So this is my two zone um, setup and as you can see I've got a button here for the left and right this is zone one and this is zone two zone one is watering at the moment if i wanted to just use this as a one-off i can just click this button and the irrigation will come on for 10 minutes at a time so if i have a hose pipe on here that i want to um, water my plants with i'll just click it on water my plants and that will be active for 10 minutes and then it will switch itself off or if i just want a one-off watering i can press the button and the irrigation comes on as you can see in the background click it again and it turns the irrigation off it's so so simple and easy to use the only drawback with this system is that you have to have wi-fi and electric quite close to your uh, setup area where you want to be watering um, because this runs on um, wi-fi and your home device needs to be um, plugged into the electricity in order for it to work but I'm really excited to see how this irrigation system is going to work how the pulse watering is going to work and whether it is going to be transforming the soil to nice soil with lots of moisture in it that the microbes are absolutely going to love and hopefully the plants are really going to benefit from that as well to find out more about the wide range of irrigation systems that Rainpoint offer visit the link down in my description so I hope you enjoyed this video guys. As you know, I love to experiment and I love getting inspiration from books, audio books, and I think that this is going to be something that's really going to work well here on the farm once I have my irrigation um, set up properly and we've got more sprinklers in place so that it is all going to be nicely automated. I will keep you updated in the future as to how this experiment goes and let me know if it's something that you've been inspired by as well. I would love to hear from you down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching again and I'll see you on the next one.